Hello everyone and welcome to Top Tips for Archaeology graduates. Joining me today we have Sam who is a science advisor for Historic England. Hi Sam, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. My first question is, what is a science advisor? What is your role currently for Historic England? What are some of the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so I work for Historic England as a science advisor. I've actually only been doing it for a couple of months, so it's still a fairly new role to me. But basically, we have uh, a whole group of science advisors that cover England. So there's nine of us covering the different regions of the country. So I'm the science advisor for the northwest of England. So it covers basically the area from Cumbria, Lancashire, and covers Merseyside, Greater Manchester and Cheshire as well. So it's quite a big area. And what my role involves is basically providing advice to archaeologists, to commercial units, uh, to the environment agency, local authorities, on basically anything that involves uh, scientific application in archaeology. So my day-to-day -day job involves sort of uh, liaising with specialists to understand best practice and how you sort of deal with scientific application in archaeology. So whether it's um, waterlogged deposits, um, all we cover all periods. Um, it could be, you know, people wanting advice on metalworking sites or um, Neolithic settlements or any sorts of buried deposits. Um, so my day-to-day -day job involves communicating with people, acting as a local source of information for the region. Um, and it also involves uh, a big part of professional development as well. So I've got to keep on top of all current scientific methods and applications. So, you know, up to date with dating methods, up to date with anything scientific that goes on on site. So that's basically what I do as a job. <laughs> so I, can, I want to ask some more questions about that. That sounds really exciting. So you have a kind of strong research element in your job, I guess, where you have to be reading the latest developments. Do you go to conferences? Do you, you know, do you read papers and journals and things like that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's part of professional development as part of our role. So as, as well as giving advice, we have to spend time, you know, going to conferences, keeping up to date with um, recent developments in science. So if anyone's developing or improving techniques, thing, you know, things like radiocarbon dating, um, we have to keep on top of that. And we also act as a local source of, of information for our region as well. So I've got to keep on top of um, things going on in the Northwest of England so I attend local conferences and I also work on my own papers as well because most science advisors have their own specialisms so we have people that um, have come into the job and used to be things like zoo archaeologists or um, archaeobotanists or metallurgists and we all bring our different experiences and expertise to the role um, using it and also expanding and developing it as we go. Is there a lot of travel? Um, obviously not at the moment. <laughs> at the moment we're, we're pretty much stuck at home. But um, outside of the kind of COVID times, would you be visiting different excavations and sites and places across the Northwest? Yeah, so as I say, I've only been doing it for a couple of months. But as I know from my colleagues, we would be um, attending site visits. So on specific excavations if people need our attendance or some guidance on um, how to assess sediments or take samples from a site for instance or to just see how things are progressing on um, significant infrastructure projects so we will we would go out on a fairly regular basis to visit those sites in our in our regions that sounds fascinating. You have a really exciting few years ahead of you, I think, in this in this role. It's really great. Um, can I ask you a little bit about your career journey? What led you to being the science advisor for the Northwest? Uh, I know you said you've had quite a varied uh, uh, track record across archaeology. I have had quite a varied career so far. I mean, I wouldn't say that my career path was steering directly to this job. It kind of came up, but, you know, a good time in my career um, 
right time, right place sort of thing. Um, but I have done a, ver- a varied amount of roles since graduating from York. Um, what was it? F- uh, 10, 11 years ago now. Um, so I've done heritage management roles where I've worked on um, agri-environment schemes and land management schemes for small units um, and agricultural companies. Um, I, w- I worked for quite a while as a community archaeologist as well and in uh, museum environments. Um, I've also worked for the Board of Antiquities Scheme. Um, then I've spent four years doing my PhD at Huddersfield. Um, and then I've spent a few years as a post excavation officer in a commercial unit. So dealing with everything once it's all been dug up on site and processing and recording all the artifacts and samples. So I have had experience of commercial community and sort of several different aspects of the, of the sector really, which has been great. Um, and I think it was really my PhD that steered me more towards the sort of scientific aspects of my role at the moment, because um, I was studying the uh, decay of artifacts in plough soils. So I was spending a lot of time during my degree programme sort of analysing artefacts and um, doing soil analysis in the lab. And it really got me to develop an understanding of methodologies and techniques in, in terms of scientific application in archaeology. Um, and a lot of my career so far has been focused around the north and especially the northwest of England. So uh, Science Advisor Northwest just sort of worked. <laughs> Um, uh, so you did your PhD on artefacts from plough soils. Did Was that a project that you applied for? Was that something that you've long been interested in or was it something that sort of came up and you thought, oh, that's a good opportunity, I'm going to take it? I applied for it. So I, I didn't write the, um, the project design myself. I took it on because it was um, designed by my supervisors and funded by AHRC and Historic England, actually. So I was working um, in museums, but because I was developing experience with portable antiquities and small finds and metal work and things, especially through being a finds liaison officer, um, I just found it fascinating. So I just jumped on the opportunity to learn more about it and experience another aspect of archaeology, really, after spending a lot of time doing uh, community stuff, I thought, I feel like to I feel like I want to do some more research stuff so again it's um it's all about sort of grasping opportunities when when they come really I find <laughs> <laughs> um it that sounds like you were and it sounds like now this kind of science advisor role brings together a lot of those different skills that you you've got up you've got to do the communication you've also got the kind of scientific knowledge and the research skills which comes from from your PhD could I ask you a little bit to go slightly further back and talk about your first degree at York what were the kind of um skills and knowledges that you think have been useful in your career both in terms of I guess subject knowledge and the modules you took but also those soft skills and transferable skills as well seems like such a long time ago now but I I just enjoyed that so much I think looking back as an experience I think it really created a firm foundation for me to progress my career from um doing the undergraduate degree at York really gave me a sense of the sort of variety of topics and how multidisciplinary archaeology really is. Um, I studied a whole range of different topics. Um, I, I did things like human evolution, funerary archaeology, um, more practical things like finds illustration, um, things about climate change and ecology, um, human remains where we laid out skeletons. I, absolutely love that module so it really gave me a flavor for the variety of stuff that you get to do in archaeology because it's not just a a set path um and i especially think it developed my confidence in speaking and presenting as well as my writing skills because we did have to do quite a lot of presenting we had to do um lecture presentations and seminars and things and that really got me confident when I remember going to begin with and when I was 18 I've never sort of 
you know talked like that in front of a, a big group of people before but by graduating I was basically used to it and it's it's really helped me in my um professional career now when it's sort of commonplace to have these conversations and and do presentations and lectures to people that you might not necessarily have known beforehand so um and it's great that certain things I've come back to as well because I did a lot of prehistoric modules when I was an undergrad and for the first few years of my career after that it didn't really crop up much in terms of the work I was doing but it's starting to crop up a bit more now in my current job so it's kind of nice to see that come full circle in terms of um, the topics and research that I get to do so absolutely loved York <laughs> <laughs> it's a great place to be studying archaeology definitely it is yeah. Yeah. So can I uh, bring this interview to a close? I guess my final question is what kind of advice would you give to graduates who see that role, the science advisor um, at Historic England? I think that's the kind of thing they'd be interested. What kind of things would you recommend that they think about and do? Um, the advice I would give really is um, it can be quite challenging and hard to pursue a career in archaeology because so many people want to do it. Um, so you have to be determined, but um, I would really think, try not to have a very specific role in mind, because if you go saying like, I want to be a curator in this very specific thing and nothing else, it kind of closes you off to those opportunities that you might not take. I think in archeology, span you kind of have to be flexible and open and always have a willingness to learn new things as well, because it's so, varied and you get to do so many different things um so always be open to new opportunities always be open to learn don't be too uh, narrow focused and especially at the beginning um just ask for advice and also for volunteering and work shadowing opportunities because you've got to remember that all these professionals that you sort of maybe aspire to was we're all in your boat one one day so they're usually very happy to give you support and advice and um yeah just be optimistic and positive and drive for it because it's a great career that's really nice to hear and I think there's some great advice there particularly around being open to opportunities you don't know what you're going to enjoy until you start start taking taking those opportunities and I'm really exactly. pleased to hear as a prehistorian that prehistory turned out to be really useful, <laughs> <laughs> useful definitely in the end uh thanks to sam so much for joining us and telling about her telling us all about her role join us again next time for top tips for archaeology graduates thank you